I am Anil Kumar sharing with you a very interesting question on continuous uniform distribution. The random variable x is described by a uniform probability distribution with mean of 50 and standard deviation of 5. Graph the probability distribution, right? So we are given a continuous uniform distribution where the mean is equal to 50 and standard deviation which is sigma is given to 5 right so that is what is given to us we need to find the the function f of x right so let us see how to figure this out so basically if we have a uniform probability distribution uh, that to continuous one then what are we expecting we are expecting that somewhere in between we have a rectangle. This is what we are expecting. And this rectangle will have a lower bound and an upper bound between any real number. Any real number between A and B could be the value for the random variable for which there is a fixed probability. And that is why we say uniform probability distribution. Is that okay? Fixed probability. Now, this probability is such that the area is 1. So basically, uh, this value of f of x is equals to always 1 over b minus a. Is it okay? 1 over b minus a. So when you multiply 1 over b minus a with b minus a, you'll get 1. So this is when, when x is between a and b. And this is equal to 0 otherwise. So that is how the probability density function is going to be defined. So when we say graph the probability distribution, kind of like this, we exactly want to find what these numbers are, the two limits. Is it okay? And then we'll say, well, this, this is following kind of distribution, which is from A to B, right? So that is how we are going to define it. Now let's see how to find with the help of given criteria where mean is 50 and standard deviation is 5. So we'll actually take the help of few formulas which we know regarding the same. So what is the formula for mean? Okay, the formula for mean is in this particular case is just the average value, center value, right? So we can say mean or mu equals to a plus b divided by 2. So this a plus b divided by 2 is equal to 50. That is what is given to us. And what is the formula for standard deviation? So standard deviation sigma is equal to b minus a divided by square root of 12. Well, you can look into the derivation for the formula also. I'll provide you with the links. Uh, and this standard deviation is given to us as 5. So we are given two parameters from where we can find these two equations and now I think it should be easy to calculate a and b right okay so let's rearrange these equations so if you rearrange then what do you get from the first equation you get a plus b equals to 2 times 50 right which is 100 so we get a plus b equals to 100 from the second equation, you get b minus a equals to 5 times square root 12, right? So, so what we will do here is we'll write to two decimal places the value of square root 2, which is 4 times square root 3, right? So we'll say 5 times square root 12 is equals to, in decimals, 17.32. So we'll write this value as 17.32, right? Okay. Now. So we have these two equations. Equation, let's call them as 1 and 2. Two variables, so it's easy to calculate. If I add them up, that is to say, equation 1 plus equation 2, then what do we get? So if you add them up, A minus A cancels, so we get 2B equals to 100 plus 17.32, right? So we get 2B equals to 117.32, right? Adding them up. So that gives us 
the value of B, right? So that is B equals to 117.32 divided by 2, right? Which is, let's see what, 117.32 divided by 2 equals to, in decimals, 58.66. So we 58.66. Is that okay? Right. If we subtract, that is to say, if I do equation 1 minus equation 2, then we get 2a, b cancels, right? So we get 2a equals 2. So let's do this. 100 minus 17.32. So we have 100 minus 17.32, which is equals to, in decimals, 82.68. And that gives the value of a as 82.68 divided by 2, right? So let's divide this by 2 to get a value which is 41.34. Okay, so we get the value of A. So in this case, what we find here is that the value of A is 41.34 and the value of B is 58.66 to two decimal places. Those are the values. Okay. Now, what is the value of the function, which is 1 over b minus a? You could find directly from here also. Do you see that? b minus a is 5 times square root of 12, which is 1732, right? So, so, so we can get from there also, right? Anyway, we could now define the function of f x as equal to, as we started with, 1 over b minus a. So we can say this implies we'll do cross multiplication right so so which is 1 over 5 square root 12 equals to 1 over b minus a is it okay so that is what 1 over b minus a is 1 over 5 square root 12 so let me do that so it gives you this looks better actually so we'll use or 1 divided by 17.32 is what 0 0.0577 something like that okay doesn't matter this is better so we'll keep this value here which is 1 over 5 square root 12 actually square root 12 is 4 times 3 so 2 10 square root 3 so it's better to write 10 square root 3 here okay rather than 5 square root 12 this is when the random variable x is between what 41.34 and 58.66 and is equal to 0 otherwise. Do you see that? So that is how we could do it. Well, I did few shortcuts here. Let me show you that. So when we say 1 over 5 square root 12, we are trying to say 5. Square root 12 is, I mean, uh, square root of 4 times 3. Is it okay? And square root of 4 is 2. So when you bring out 2, so we get 10 square root 3. So that is this function which we wrote here. Is that okay? So, and these are the limits of a and b. Now when we have to sketch it, now we know this is the kind of sketch. So let me sketch it here. And since these values are pretty large, let me make a break here. And call this as f of x. And this value here is 1 over 10 square root 3. Does it make sense to you? Right? So that is how you could actually get your probability distribution for uniform function, random variable, as shown here. I'm Anil Kumar and I hope that helps. Thank you and all the best.